Welcome to another Froggy Throated Edition of the Ten Buck Test Bench. I am still fighting that nasty head cold I've had in my previous two videos, or my last two videos. Uh, <clears throat> and once again, we're down here in the lab uh, under the influence of cold medicine, playing around. We had some of that lemony hot. Uh, you put it in a cup, mix it with water, and throw it in the microwave. And I don't know if it makes you feel any better. It's got some aspirin in it, and it tastes okay, and it's a nice hot something to drink. Makes you feel a little better, I guess. And I'm wearing my ratty old insulated winter shirt again. I love this old shirt. It's a little bit cool down here in the lab, and it's getting, as the weather's getting cooler, this shirt comes out. This pretty much lives down here with me in the wintertime. Got nice pleated insulation on the inside. At any rate, <clears throat> we've more or less finished uh, repairing our old accurate instruments signal generator slash signal tracer and uh, tonight we're going to check it out using our Heathkit frequency counter and take a look at the signal trace on the oscilloscope back there. In a previous video I had stated that a lot of these signal generators used harmonics for the higher frequencies and if you take a look at the sine wave up there you can see that's not a very good sine wave and as we go up in frequency we should start seeing some stuff that's very 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 rich in harmonics now let me turn the scope trace up a little bit ah we're starting to see some there and let's see what we've got uh, let me turn the trace up again you can see the sun from the shape of the sine wave there we go you can see that's very very rich in harmonics so you can use these things at double or triple the frequency that's indicated on the dial because our fundamental frequency would be from this peak to this peak however you can see there are many frequencies mixed in those are harmonics and the generator will give you a signal your radio receiver won't know the difference between the fundamental and the harmonic if you're tuned to harmonics so the unit should prove to be fairly useful now I'm going to go down to where it's going to be real useful for us on the test bench here shortly and that's going to be playing with our AM radio when I get that bread boarded up we're going to have to do an IF alignment intermediate frequency alignment and I'm just playing with the controls here and uh, that would be it they say it's 465 I believe it was kilohertz on the documentation that came with the AM transistor radio and that will give us a 465 or 66 kilohertz now the dial isn't extremely accurate and I haven't taken great pains to try to align it because typically I use one of these old generators with a frequency counter now I could go in here and try to align this to get it so when it right now let's see let's put it on 456 indicated and it's 448 and to be honest with you you wouldn't know the difference if you align to it just by going here uh, about a tweak of the oscillator in the front end and the IF would probably happily work at 448 kilohertz but we'll try to get it as accurate as we can 456 would be the more common one today and I've gone a little too high. These are not extremely stable generators. However, they don't have to be. There we go. There's four. That's close enough to 456 kilohertz. We don't care about the 467 extra hertz. Now, the sharp-eyed among you might notice that the faulty digit is now down here at the end. It was one of the LED displays and the center segment's missing so when you see this go from zero to that seven that's actually a nine <clears throat> and i'm perfectly happy to have it in that condition i went online and i priced some of these uh, seven segment displays they are available however it's going to cost me about twelve dollars to get four of them and i paid twelve dollars for the frequency counter so I don't need it. I, I know that last digit is pretty much insignificant on this device. It's going to drift up and down a little bit. All we care about are our most significant digits. And this is close enough for anything you're going to do in your lab 
uh, working on radios, receivers, etc. If you had some kind of calibration lab or you were doing high-end uh, studies, then you'd want something a lot more expensive. Now, my other counter, which is up here and isn't even turned on right now, those are a couple of thousand dollars. You do not need that kind of equipment. You can get along just fine. I got along for 20 years with a counter just like this. I only bought that recently because, and that's not new. I didn't pay the, the full price for that. I bought that recently because I was doing some, uh, some frequency studies on different uh, uh, oven oscillators and so on and so forth. Oven, uh, boy, you can tell the cold mints are kicking in. I needed an accurate frequency counter. Let's put it that way. We got the indicator light working, a little neon lamp in here. And the signal generator is up and going, so we'll be using that very soon on our test bench. Now, this has a nice function on it, which is going to prove to be handy, and that's a signal tracer. And if I turn this up and put something here, I don't know if you can hear that over the fan that's in the oscilloscope. That fan in the oscilloscope drives me crazy. Let me try to get some more noise here. Uh, turn on one of these fluorescent lights. This one probably is good and noisy. And there you go. If I put my hand up to the fluorescent light while I'm sticking the screwdriver in here, you can hear that buzz. That's a signal tracer function that's built into this unit. And that will come in very handy when we're working on the little transistor radio after I get it breadboarded and I've started gathering up stuff today to do that. We'll be able to show you how the signal passes through the radio. You can also do that with an oscilloscope. However, being able to hear what each stage is doing can be very beneficial for troubleshooting. And this unit allows you to hear that. Now, if you should come across an ICO or a Heathkit signal tracer in your travels for 10 bucks, grab it. They are very, very handy to have. Sadly, I had two of them and sold them a couple of years ago because I've got oscilloscopes and I've got a lot of top-end equipment. My uh, This unit here, this has built-in demodulation as well as a spectrum analyzer. It's bas basically a, uh, uh, a receiver analyzer, transmitter analyzer. Everything's built into it. Now, these are not cheap, even old ones like these. However, I bought that because it made it a little bit easier to do. I work on this stuff all the time, and I, I want stuff to happen a little bit quicker. I need something that is a little bit easier. Not easier, a little faster to use. Combines a lot of functions. I cannot stress enough, you do not need that top-end equipment. You need a couple of good voltmeters. Now, an analog voltmeter like this is great. Uh, the Heathkit analog voltmeters are great. Uh, they're high impedance. This is low impedance. You also want a high impedance meter. And a good digital voltmeter is very handy. But 90% of your troubleshooting can be done with an, a voltmeter. It may take a little bit longer, but you're actually going to learn more. And it's actually, it's fun. I've been, as I've been doing this series, I'm relearning how to troubleshoot because I've been spoiled for so long using this top end equipment you start ignoring the basics you go for your high end test equipment and now that I'm forcing myself to use a voltmeter and simple equipment it, I, I'm getting a kick out of how much I am relearning uh, as far as troubleshooting and going through the circuits you know you have to know your electronics use your brain along with a voltmeter So I guess that's about it for this evening. I am not feeling good, but I did want to show everybody that this unit is now up and working, putting out a decent signal. We've got our Heathkit meter up and working well, so these will go on our 10 duck buck test bench. I've got a table set aside that I'm going to put all our $10 equipment on eventually for doing experiments. And I uh, wanted to show you what I meant about having harmonics, you know, double and triple the frequency available on these. The problem is if there's an error here of, let's say we're on 500 megahertz and we're off 200 hertz. When you double it, you're going to be off 400 hertz. When you triple it, 
<clears throat> you're going to be off 600 hertz and so on however if you have the backup of a frequency counter you'll you can still do some very 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 good work with these older signal generators they are very handy to have around from time to time the downside is sometimes these lower end frequency counters won't deal well with the harmonics in fact let's see what happens if we go up to the high end oh here's what i wanted to show you i did i knew there was something else i wanted to show you i'm going to expand the range just turn this off i'm going to expand the range on the scope so we can see what's happening here this is band d band d is from 11 to 45 megahertz or mega cycles as it's listed on here band e is supposed to be from 35 to 120 mega cycles watch the oscilloscope when i change the band in fact watch the frequency counter right now we're on 20 megahertz 20.2 when i turn it to the next range nothing changes absolutely nothing changes the frequency remains the same the scope trace remains the same what's going on here what's going on here is the scale is simply calibrated in the second harmonic or the third harmonic it's not actually making any change in the signal generator all it's doing is giving you an indication of where the second or third harmonic would fall would fall so on band e that would be around 60 megahertz so what they're doing is using the third harmonic of 20 megahertz and if i dial this exactly to 20 megahertz on the previous band let's get it to see how close we can get this to 20 megahertz there we go you see there's absolutely no change between these two bands that's just random noise on the counter don't you know, that's not me changing anything so there you go this when i said earlier that some of these units merely use harmonics for the upper bands that's what this one's doing exactly there is no change between d and e it's merely giving you the mental image of being on a number another scale so you, you start thinking in the terms of 60 megahertz versus the 20 megahertz of the previous scale okay so don't expect your frequency counter to always read <laughs> what you would think it should read based on the switch position triplet in your head 60 megahertz okay that's it for tonight guys I am going to go back and crawl into bed. It's getting around, what time is it? It's getting around 8 o'clock in the evening. I've been up all day helping my buddy uh, fix his town and country out in the garage here. I'm spent. This cold is kicking my butt. I want to go get some sleep so that I feel better tomorrow. And if the sun breaks through, I'm hoping to take the motorcycle out and get a haircut. Not much interest to you, but that's what I want to do with some of my weekend. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you found some of this useful. And uh, we'll see you again soon. See you.